Hello and welcome to this presentation on gender equality and how we work to promote gender equality in LO Norway. My name is Synöve Konglevold and I work as a special advisor on gender equality politics. And I will start my presentation here. This poster is from the Labour Party uh, and the election campaign in 1933. This was a time of economic crisis with very high levels of unemployment. The trade unions mobilized workers uh, to vote to the Labour Party in the national election. And in this election, the Labour Party had a major breakthrough. This poster is kind of an iconic poster in Norwegian political history. And you see here the slogan that, they, that the, uh, made this breakthrough uh, possible. It was the whole people working. And in the corner there, uh, you might see some of the similarity with English. It says, city and land, hand in hand. So this is a very nice poster. But from a gender perspective, there is something about it that is lacking. I guess you can see it. There are no women in this picture. And the reason that I start here is because as part of my job, I often hold presentations for different international delegations who come to Norway and want to learn why we are so gender equal in Norway. And uh, therefore, I often start with this one because it is a reminder that also here we have a history where women's work was valued less, where women's work were seen as less important than men's work. And this is, both in Norway and globally, an underlying explanation why we still have to fight for gender equality. Yet, Norway is one of the most gender equal societies in the world, here uh, illustrated by the ranking of the uh, gender gap report from World Economic Forum. You see here that Norway is number three, uh, followed uh, just, uh, just uh, beaten by Iceland and Finland. So uh, this is also another important point that in all these different kinds of ranking, and the details may vary, the Nordic countries are uh, always in the top. Why is this the case? Well, I will point at three reasons. And if you have listened to uh, introduction and presentation on the Nordic model, you will recognize them. The three reasons is, first, that we are countries with high employment rates. This is pushed forward by the macroeconomic politics and government politics. Secondly, we have a strong welfare state or strong welfare states. That is also very important to gender equality. And finally, we have regulated labor markets, which also are essential to gender equality. And I will go a little bit into the details. First, the high employment rate. Because high employment rate also mean, means high employment for women. And employment means that women can have their own independent income. It means that women are able to support themselves. And that is fundamental to gender equality. Next, secondly, we have a strong welfare state. And this has a dual effect and has had so in the development of uh, uh, through history in Norway in the modern years. Because on the one hand, when we have uh, expanded public services, when we have built a strong welfare state, this has provided jobs for many women that they could kind of uh, turn what they had done as the unpaid care work into paid care work in the public sector. But secondly, it also, for all women, is important to enable women to both work and take care uh, of their family, to combine paid work with care responsibility. So a strong welfare state, that is one really important reason why the Nordic countries have achieved uh, so much in, when it comes to gender equality. The third one, uh, and not the least, a regulated labor market. That is, of course, fundamental to gender equality. To say it uh, in one way, it doesn't help so much with parental leave if you risk getting fired when you tell the boss that you are pregnant. 
and it doesn't help so much with uh, public care services and the public kindergarten uh, if the working hours is from 7 in the morning until 7 in the evening. Then to have good workers' rights with the right to leave your job uh, in the afternoon, to have regulated working hours, that's really important for gender equality. So, uh, a regulated uh, labor market that is really fundamental to protect women against discrimination and to enable work-life balance for all. Added to these three elements of the Nordic model in the, that we have talked about, it is also really important that we have had an active gender equality politics in Norway uh, the, for, for several decades. Here is uh, another very nice picture. This is from 1986, and it shows the Brundtland government uh, after it had been appointed and standing in front of the castle in Norway. Uh, Gro Harlem Brundtland in the white jacket, she was the prime minister, and uh, she pushed all her female ministers to the front. These ministers, they were more than poster girls. And the prime minister herself, she started her uh, public life uh, as a young medical doctor arguing for the right of women to self-decision in the matter of abortions. And together, these women, they fought for real changes in women's rights in, and gender equality in Norway. Even so, Many years after, now, today, in uh, 2021, uh, work life and the economy is full of gender differences. Women has uh, a lower employment rate than men, also here in Norway. And in average, we have a gender pay gap where women in average earn 87.5% uh, of what men in average earn. And then we have calculated into full-time jobs for all because one third of all women, they work part time. And in average income, a uh, woman's average income is 70% of men's income and the income gap therefore is 30%. So we have many, many gender differences. This, these are just a few. So how do we work then uh, in Illinois Norway to promote gender equality? In this presentation, I have divided between two main strategies. That's the offense strategy and the defense strategy. And I will start with the last one, the defense strategy. Well, really important then is to keep and develop the basics of the Nordic model, the one which I have talked about today. The strong welfare state, the uh, full employment, the uh, politics for full employment, to promote full employment and the regulated labor market. Secondly, it's also really important that we mobilize when we see that uh, fundamental rights of women are challenged. This is uh, a third, I would say, very nice picture that I have brought to you today. It is from uh, this, the main square uh, in, in Oslo where demonstrations take place, just uh, next to uh, where Elo Norway is located. This is from 8th of March, uh, and women marching to protest against the previous government's uh, several attacks uh, on the free choice to abortion of women. They did this in different ways, uh, not uh, as severe as we can see in many other European countries, but still we did not accept any limitations to the right to safe and self-decided uh, abortions. On the offense side, uh, I have, uh, will focus on two uh, examples. First one is to promote full-time work as the rule for all workers, also for women. The second one is addressing sexual harassment in the world of work, but also within our own organizations. This uh, figure uh, is showing something really essential when it comes to part-time work, part work. Because whether you work part-time or full-time, that is dependent on gender, but not only gender. As I said, one third of all women work part-time in Norway, but uh, it varies between women who work part-time and who work full-time. 
It also varies, it varies due to your position in the labor market where you work or what kind of occupation you work in. Here, um, I have uh, this figure shows uh, differences in part time work uh, among uh, men and women dependent on uh, how long education they have finalized. The red bars show part time among men dependent on education level. The yellow one shows the same for women. And we see when we're looking at the red bars here, that uh, the, 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 the level of men working part-time increases uh, when, people have, when the men have shorter education. Uh, but we see also that for all levels of education, the part-time rate among women is much higher, and the differences are highest among those who don't have higher education. So if you have a job, that doesn't demand higher education, and you are a woman, the risk that you work part-time is really much higher. And among those in the labor market who have primary school as the highest level of education, almost 60% of the women work part-time. And they often do so in jobs who have low payment. So part-time is not an issue that can be reduced to women wanting to work part-time to, to take care of their children. Part-time is dependent on gender, but also on social class. The second on the offense side, and now I'm, now I'm soon finished with my presentation, that is um, uh, the, to work against sexual harassment. The Me Too movement in 2017 and 2018 was a real wake-up call also here in Norway. This is again a picture from a March, March 8. We were walking uh, and uh, standing up for a woman's right to not be sexually harassed. And this is a nice picture. You see here there are two women uh, uh, carrying the, the sticks from this um, uh, um, banner. Uh, the first one you see here uh, on the left, that is uh, Hadia Tajik, which is currently the Minister of uh, Labour in Norway. Uh, the other woman there with the scarf and the, and the, um, and the black uh, pillow, that is actually me. Well, to sum it up, gender equality is about fairness. It is that work for all, when we talk about work for all, that must imply work for all, also for women. Women must be able to support themselves. And to keep and develop the elements of the Nordic model that is fundamental to gender equality. But we also need an active gender equality politics. We need to acknowledge that women are yet still discriminated uh, because they are women. We need to fight discrimination against women. We need to fight harassment and sexual harassment against women. We need to protect women's fundamental right to decide over their own body. Because attacks on these fundamental rights can never be accepted. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>